Blazor WebAssembly Pagination Component. In this video, first we will create a pagination component by using the following pagination template. This is the pagination template we are going to implement in this tutorial. Then create a consumer component, namely a display comments component which displays many comments or records. Finally, we will consume the pagination component in the display comments component. Now let's start it. This is a Blazor WebAssembly project we just created. First, let's create the pagination component. Let's implement a pagination which is just display it in the Bootstrap homepage. First, let's look at the Bootstrap homepage. This is the pagination page in Bootstrap. This is the pagination template we are going to implement in this tutorial. First, let's see this template in detail. If we see this template carefully, we have several items there. Namely, we have text, for example, previous, one, two, three, or next. Then we have page index. For example, this is the page index one, page index two, page index three. And uh, now this page index two is active. If we point three, as a time this next is disabled therefore we have to have a parameter enabled or disabled in summary in this page item in this single page item we have four elements text page index enabled and active in the next step we are going to create an object namely a page item object first let's create a models folder Let's create a page item class. We have four property in this page item. We just saw that we have text, page index, enabled and active. Therefore, Okay, save this. Now let's create a constructor. Let's save this. Now we have created our page item class. Next step, let's create a pagination component. In general, components reside inside the pages folder. Therefore, in order to save time, I have prepared the HTML and the c -sharp code portions of this component. Therefore, first I will copy this code and paste it here. Then I will explain the code line by line. This is the prepared code for this pagination component. First I will copy this. Copy. First I will clear this. Paste it here. Save this. Okay, we have some error here. Let's see this object. Okay, we have some error here. Save this. Now, let's explain this code. First, let's explain the c -sharp code portion. We need to create the page link. All page links reside inside the list. Therefore, we have created a page items list because in the pagination component, we have multiple page links. Therefore, we need a list here. Then we have page index from outside the component. We are passing page index. Therefore, we need this page index parameter. Then we need total pages. 
because we are going to display multiple records. Therefore, we need total page parameter. This is a parameter. Then we need the radius. This is the number of page links displayed in the pagination component. Then we have an event callback. When we select the page link, unselected page will be called. Then we have answered parameter because we are going to set parameter outside from this component. Inside this unparameter set, we are creating the content of the pagination component. This is the content of the pagination component. Inside the pagination component, first we need to create a previous link. If the page index is larger than one at set time, we have previous. The page index should be larger than one. Actually, previous page index is current page index minus one. Then create the page item. This is the constructor of the page item. First, we have page index, then we have enable it, and then we have text. Therefore, this is the previous page index. This is a Boolean value, has previous page, yes. And then we have the text. Now we have created the previous page. Then we create other elements. If the radius is larger than total page, as a time radius is equal to total page minus one. Then we use the for loop, simple for loop, loop through the total page, create each page links. For example, if this index should be between page index minus radius and it should be less than page index plus radius, then we are going to create page items. Page item index, this is Boolean active enable it and this is the text for example one two three four then we give the active if we click it will be clickable therefore each page item should be active then we create the next page or next page link has next page if the current page index less than total pages at that time we have next page therefore this is the next page item boolean then we have next page index next page index current page index and the plus one then we are going to create the page item by using the next page index and has next page boolean value and this is the text of next now we have created the previous page link we have created the all other page links then finally we have created the next page link okay now we have created the pages after that when we select the page link it should be display the page at that time we are going to display some data therefore we need this event event callback this event callback receives page item if the page index equal to the current page index return if the page item is not enabled at that time also we return this is the conditions because this page item is equal to page item is not changed, we will return. Then if the page item is disabled at that time, we also return. After that, this is the current page index and this is the received page index. Then unselected callback and we are invoking async page index. Namely, we are selecting that page index in the html code portion we are creating the ui portion of the page links actually this is the code same as the pagination template in the bootstrap homepage. we are loop through page items and then creating each page links here uh, first each links is active and then we have here css page links is active we active it and if page links is enabled and sometimes it's not active and sometimes it enabled it as therefore we added this CSS. Then we have a page text here in the page links, namely the label of the page link. Then we have unclick event. If we click that page link is this select current page event callback will be called and then it will be invoke this unselected page even callback. Now we have completed the pagination component. In the next step, let's create a display comments component. Inside that component, we are going to consume this pagination component. Actually, there is a JSON placeholder test API. Inside this test API, 
there are multiple recorders. In this tutorial, let's use this comments recorders. There are 500 comments. Let's see this. This is an array. Inside this array, there are multiple comments. Namely, there are 500 comments. This is a record and this is a JSON object. Inside this object, we have post ID, ID, name, email, and the comment body. Therefore, we need a class to represent an object. First, let's create the comment object. We just saw that in the JSON placeholder APIs comment array inside that object, we have several elements. Namely, we have post ID, ID, name, email, and body. Therefore, we are creating this class. Save this. In the next step, let's create the display comments component. In order to save time, I have prepared the HTML and the C -sharp code portions of this display comments component. Therefore, first I will copy that code and then paste it here. After that, I will explain the code line by line. This is the code I have prepared. I just copy it. Paste it here. Save this. Now, let's explain the code line by line. First, let's explain the c code portion. First, we have created a comment class. Namely, this comment object represents a single object inside the comments array in the JSON placeholder API. Then we created a comments array here, all comments array, because we are going to get all comments and then later we will display it in the pagination component. Then we create a second array. Each time we click a pagination link and this will be displayed. First, we have a page index. Then we have items per page, for example, 25, and then we have initialized total pages, for example, one. We have uninitialized async. Inside uninitialized async, we are getting all comments by using the HTTP client. Because we have HTTP client here, we have injected this service, then by using this HTTP client, we are getting all comments by using HTTP client. This is the URL of the comments. If this is not null, at that time, we are getting the total pages because we have the count of these all comments and we have, for example, we have 25 items per page. Therefore, this is the total pages, namely number of objects. And then we divide it by the items per page we are getting total pages. Then after we get the total page, skip zero, and we are getting the comments. This is the initialized comment, which will be displayed when the page loaded first time. Then after we select a page link, at that time, we will display comments. For example, this is the page index, the current page index, using this page index and minus one, multiplying items per page. This is the skip count. For example, if we are Clicking page link two at that time, two minus one is one. Each page has 25 items. Therefore, this is a skip item. From all comments, we are skipping this much and then taking items 25. This is the comments array when we click a single page link in the pagination component. Let's see the HTML code portion. Inside HTML code portion, we have a HTML table, simple HTML table, uh, because we have ID, we have name, we have email and body. Therefore, this is the table header and this is the corresponding rows, namely the actual data. 
Therefore, we have a commentary and we loop through using the for each and creating each row here. This is one row and we are looping through and creating all rows here. In the table footer portion, we are consuming the pagination component we just created. In the pagination component, we have total pages and this is the total pages. Then we have page index. This is the current page index and we have radius 3. This means at first time, namely previous 1, 2, 3 and the next total 5 page links. Previous 1, 2, 3 and the next. Therefore, radius is 3. Then we have unselected page. This is the method we have here. Namely, each time click the page link, as a time this method will be called. And inside this method, we are getting comments based on the selected page link. Now the component is completed. Before run this, let's call this component in the side navigation bar of this application. We have a side navigation bar here. Okay, I just copy this. This is the router template. I just copy this, paste it here, and then okay, save this. Now we have completed our components. Namely, first we have created the pagination component. Then we have created display comments component and inside this display comments component we have implemented the pagination component and displaying comments page by page. First let's run this application and this see. Let's run this application by using .NET Watch Run. Now it's running. Therefore, let's see. Now this application is running, for example. Okay, the application is running. And we have display comments here. If I click this menu, it will be show up some comments here. For example. Okay, now it works. Our pagination component also works. Okay, this is the second page because we are going to display 25 elements in a page. Third page, 75, 100. Okay, now the pagination component working great. Okay, let's put the title here. Now the title is not visible, therefore. We need to fix this. Actually, here we need to background. Okay, now save this. Okay, now comments pagination test. Now let's change the page size, namely items per page. Let's say five and save this. It will be loaded automatically because we are using .NET Watch Run. Okay, each page we have five records. For example, okay, it works great. If we come here, next, next. Now this is disabled. Okay. Now the pagination component working great. Thank you for your watching. Please subscribe.